polynomials. We have subtracted polynomials. We have multiplied polynomials. We did a little factoring. So guess what's left? Dividing. Okay, so the last thing is going to be dividing polynomials. All right, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go backwards. I'm going to scooch here over to the side. You can follow this if you want, but this is the way I'm going to do this. Um, I'm going to go back to long division. You guys remember long division? I learned it in division. maybe fourth grade, I'm guessing. I don't remember either. So if you had something like uh, 249 divided by, oh, let's just say 3. Okay, you were like, oh, I know how to do this. You go 3, and then this 249 goes under here. Okay, yeah, and you... What's that? That's do you remember? Okay, so you would oh, say, oh, yeah. how many times does 3 go into 2? It doesn't. Okay, so then you go, how many times does 3 go into 24? 8. And then you multiply it through, right? So you have 8 times 3, which makes 24. And then what do you do right here on this step? You subtract, right? So you subtract, and that's 0, and then you bring down this 9, and then you kind of start it again, right? So you go 3 times what is 9? 3, and then you 3. Oh, I should have picked a number that had a remainder. That was a good guess. Uh, <laughs> so 9. So let's pretend, uh, here, let me do one more. Let's do, uh, let's do 10 and... There we go. Same number. Who cares? That's fine. Same idea. So you go 10, and you say, okay, 10 goes into 24. <laughs> 2 times. And so 2 times 10 is 20, and then you subtract, right? And 24 yeah. minus 20 makes 4, and then you drop the 9, and you do it again, and 10 goes into 49 four times. 4 times. And then you multiply, and 4 times 10 is 40, and then you subtract, and you get 9. And what the heck is 9? It's remainder? Well, what the heck does that mean? No, it's a fraction. This is one thing I'm very disappointed. They didn't teach you back when you were actually doing long division. Okay? 9, that's what's left over, so it's 9 out of 10. So actually, it's 24 and 9 tenths. <laughs> I like fractions. That's exact. 24.9 is a decimal. But if you keep it in fraction, it would look like that. How simple is that? All right, let's do this with polynomials. Same thing. We're going to make it look way cooler. Let's see if I can pull this over here. Uh, you see what I'm looking at? This A, I'm going to pull this over. Let's see, we got X squared plus 3x plus 1, and then, hold on, we got 4x cubed plus 2x. All right, so I'm going to write this so we can see it. There we go. Beautiful. Okay. So here is my example of how to divide using long division with polynomials. Okay, it is almost exactly the same as doing it with actual numbers. Okay, you start by looking at the first term of each of the two polynomials. Okay, so this one over here is called the divisor. This one over here is called the dividend, the one that's underneath. Dividend and divisor, just so you know. Okay, so the first term on the divisor is x squared, and now I'm comparing that to the first term on the dividend, which is 4x cubed. Okay, so I say to myself, what do I have to multiply x squared by to make it 4x cubed? 4x. 4x. Okay, so I'm going to put 4x on the top, just like we did before. 4x. And I'm actually going to line this up just because I like to make things nice and linear. Okay, so I have this 4x up on top, and then what do I do with that 4x? You multiply it through. You multiply it by the divisor. Now notice my divisor happens to have three terms, so I'm going to multiply by all three terms. So what is 4x times x squared? What is 4x times x squared? 4x cubed. Okay, what is 4x times 3x? 12x squared. You see how I'm lining these up? What is 4x times 1? 4x. Everybody follow that? 
Okay. Now I'm going to subtract just like I did before. I'm going to subtract each term. Now what is uh, 4x cubed minus 4x cubed? Zero. And that should play out every time you do this. Okay, and now working on my squares. What is 2x squared minus 12x squared? Negative 10. You guys, the hardest part of long division is subtraction. I can almost guarantee that when you make a mistake doing this, it was just basic subtraction. So be very careful when you subtract. Okay, moving on to my linear term. What is 3x minus 4x? Negative 1x. And I'm just going to say minus x. Okay, then what am I going to do next? I'm going to drop the 5, just like I did with the, the regular number. Okay, and then I do it again. Okay, so now I'm looking at the x squared, and now I'm comparing that to this number in front here, just the first one, the negative 10x squared. Okay, and I say, what do I have to multiply x squared by to make it negative 10x squared? Negative 10. Okay, so negative 10, which is going to look like minus 10 upstairs on the top there. Okay, upstairs. Okay, I'm going to multiply that through. So what's negative 10? times x squared. Negative 10 x squared. What's negative 10 times 3x? Negative 30x. What's negative 10 times 1? Negative 10, right? You got to make sure it's negative. Okay, here we go. We're going to subtract. Don't screw this up. How many x squared do I have? Why'd you look at b? Negative 29x. All right, so I have negative x minus negative 30. Remember, minus negative is the same as plus. So what's negative 1 plus 30? Oh, it's 31x. Let me try that again, okay. Negative 1 plus 30. 29. Negative. Negative. Okay, negative. if you have a negative, minus a negative. Negative minus a negative, negative minus a negative. Minus a negative is the same as adding. <laughs> I knew that was part would get you, that minus it. Okay, ready for the constant? What's 5 minus negative 10? Good. If you're having trouble with that, there's those really fancy yellow calculators on your desk. Feel free to use those if you have to. All right, where am I not at now? Uh, wait, What's left it, here? I it was 8. You have 29x oh, plus 15 now. Okay, what's 29x plus 15? Yeah. That's the remainder. Okay, so I get to the part where if I look at my x squared and say, what would I have to multiply x squared by to make a 29x? Is it possible to get smaller? No. No. Okay, so once I get to that point, I'm left with my remainder, okay? So did you notice the way I wrote my remainder on that example above? Okay, that's exactly the way I'm going to write my remainder with polynomials. Okay, I'm going to put a plus sign in between because it's technically a separate term, and my remainder is going to be simply over my divisor. The one out in front. And that is the answer. That's the, answer. That's the answer. Okay, I got one question. One question. Where did we get the 4 from? Where did you get the 4? The, the four red 4? Yep. That's on the top. The very so top 4? We just take, we just take that. Uh, so, what do you get? Right, we're talking this 4x. Four, four right okay, so I started with what do you have to multiply x squared by to make it 4x cubed? That's Okay, should we do one more of those? I have another question. Yes. Oh. I have one question. To make it easier to read, can you put the remainder section on the So, like, it doesn't get blended together? Uh, if, yeah, that wouldn't be wrong to do. Just as long as you leave the plus on the outside. Sure. Yeah, that wouldn't hurt. Yeah, that's fine. 
All right, let's do another one. Let's see where can I pull. Oh, there we go. This is a good one. Ooh, this is a great question. All right, so we're moving on to this question number four, which I'm sure you can't see unless you will have um, hawk vision. Well, actually, I have a tablet. Or a tablet. All right, so I'm going to zoom in on this really, really fast before I finish writing this because I want you guys to notice something very, 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 very important. Okay, I want you to look at the dividends. Okay, that's the first polynomial, the, the one we're dividing. And tell me what is the problem with that. It's huge. It's huge. It's that's not a problem. Okay. But there is a problem. Well, There's something that is missing. We're not dividing by There's not a number in front of x. What's that? We're not dividing by another polynomial. Well, yeah, technically x squared plus 16 is a polynomial. Okay, I want you to look at the way it's written. Now, remember that it's written in standard form. By the way, you can only divide when things are written in standard form, just so you know. Uh, we have an x to the fourth, an x cubed, an x squared. No. There's no x. There's no linear term. Okay, that becomes very important because remember how we were lining all those variables up on that one before? If I'm missing a term, I need to have a placeholder. So what am I going to put in its place? Zero. zero. Just zero. Zero x's. Okay, so when I write this, I'm going to say plus zero x minus four. Okay. Does this look scary? Yes. You guys are freaking out. This is not hard. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Here we go. This isn't bad. Okay, yes. Okay, so I start with this. I'm looking at x squared, and I'm looking at the 9x to the 4th. And I say to myself, what do I have to multiply x squared by to make it 9x to the 4th? 2. 2. 2 times x squared is 9x to the 4th? 9x squared, right? Yes. Sure. Nine x squared. There you go. Is everybody following that? What do I have to multiply x squared by to make it nine x to the fourth? Good. Not two. No twos. No. Okay. Now I'm going to multiply that through. Okay. So what's nine x squared times x squared? Nine x to the fourth, which it should be exactly nine x to the fourth because that was how we got it. What is nine x squared times sixteen? I don't know. You guys have calculators. What's 9 times 16? Um, 144. 144. Oh, now wait a second. 144 what? X squared. X squared. See what I just did immediately? I was like, oh, it's that term, but I want to line this up. 144x squared. Okay, make sure you line those up or you're going to have wrong answers. Okay, so how many x cubes are written? One, seven. Zero. There's zero on that red line. Okay, so it's just going to drop down. It's going to be like subtracting zero. Okay. All right, so when I subtract, what happens to my x to the fourth? Zero. zero. How many x cubes do I have? One. One. Okay. All right, how many x squareds do I have? What is 11 minus 144? Negative 100. 100. Oh, negative. Hold on. Excuse me. Let's get rid of that plus. Minus 133x squared. Oh, my goodness. Okay, and then I'm going to drop. Wait, wait. The x squared don't cancel out. Well, you're adding terms. You're not dividing. Right? Or subtracting, right? Subtracting like terms. It's like adding oranges together. If I have two oranges plus five oranges, they are still oranges. <laughs> right? All right, we're going to drop this next term, even though it is a zero. I'm just going to hold it as a place. All right, here we go. Round two. Not yet. That's going to be the next line. You only drop one number at a time. Just one. What? I subtracted, but I'm only dropping one, one at a time. 
All right, so x squared and x cubed. What do I have to multiply x squared by to make it x cubed? X. Okay, so I have a plus x on the top. Okay, so I send it through. Here we go. x times x squared is x cubed. What is x times 16? 16x. 16x. So notice I want to line this up. 16x. Put it under the right term. Very careful. All right, here we go. We're going to subtract. How many x cubes do I have? Adios. How many x squareds do I have? Negative 133. That is a crazy number. Uh, how many x's do I have? What? Negative, right? Because I'm subtracting 16. See that? Minus. Okay, and then I drop my minus 4. All right, this should be my last time through. So every time you just drop one. Yep, you just drop one at a time. All right, I'm going to go with right. That's when I subtract it. So I, I subtract anything that I can, but anything that's not being subtracted becomes the next drop. Okay. All right, here we go. Last time, what do I have to multiply x squared by, x squared by, to make it negative 133x squared? Negative 133. Oh, my goodness. All right, here we go. Negative 133 times x squared makes negative 133x squared. What is negative 133 times 16? Negative 2,000. Say that one more time. 28. Oh, boy. Okay. And we're going to subtract. So what happens to my x squared? Go away. What's my x? Negative 16 x's. Uh oh, how do we uh, subtract what's negative 4 minus negative 2,128? Positive 2,124. So, that's the remainder. So, we're going to write it with a big fat plus first, and then we're going to say. Negative 16x plus 200 over x squared plus 16. Where did you get the 2128? Uh, 133 times 16. When I sent it through. 133 times 16. How many decided to? You have to you have to multiply it by every term. So any number that gets put up here on the top has to be multiplied by the entire polynomial, not just the first and that's term. That's every step. So like, yep. step. Oh. You multiply it through. Yes. It just seems like it takes a lot. Of time. There must be an easier way. Oh my gosh! Is there possibly an easier way? I hope so. Well, let's say there's an easier way for certain cases. So there's an easier way for everything. Okay. So the other way of dividing polynomials is called synthetic division. Is there a website online? What? Is there a website online? Probably. <laughs> you mean is there an app for that? You could probably just Google it. I don't know. I've never found one. All right, let's talk about synthetic division. Uh, synthetic division is an incredibly simple way to divide. Um, but it can only be used if you have a divisor that looks like that. You guys see what I'm circling? X minus A, A being some constant. So X plus A, X minus A. What is my divisor? What kind of polynomial is that? L linear. Okay, it only works with a linear divisor. Okay, let me do it. Before you ask that question, let me go through and do one, and then, and then, uh, then we'll do it. Okay, so I'm gonna steal this example. No, let's see. I'm gonna steal. Okay. 
Okay, so here's our case. So I'm going to do this case. I'm just going to pull this over to the side. Everybody see it? So our divisor is x plus 5. All right, now what's going to happen is I'm going to take the x plus 5, and I'm going to mentally set that equal to 0. Solve for that equation, set it equal to 0, and solve the equation. What's my value of x? Negative 5. Okay, so negative 5 is the number that's going to go into my box. Okay, ready? Negative 5. How are you confused already? So see this right here? So x plus 5, if I mentally set that equal to 0. Okay, I'll do it out in front of you. Okay, if I set that equal to 0, I've already seen how if I subtract 5, x is equal to negative 5. Okay, so that number goes into the box. Okay, so now... After my box number, I'm going to look at the dividend, okay? So this one that's on the top, the 7x cubed minus 6x, what? No, it's negative 5. I just talked about it. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the number that is in front of each term kind of in a row after my little box, okay? So what is the number that's in front of the x cubed? 7. What's the number that's in front of the x squared? Oh, be careful, right? We still need a placeholder. There is no x squared, so we need to have a 0. What's the number that's in front of my x? Negative 6. What's the number of my constant? 9. Okay. I'm going to leave a space, leave a space, and then draw a line. Okay, ready? All right, this is the way synthetic division works. You start by dropping the first number. So this 7 is going to go straight down below the line, 7. Okay, any number that gets dropped gets multiplied by the box. So what is 7 times negative 5? Negative 35. So watch where I put negative 35. Okay, now in synthetic division, I'm going to add down. Long division is subtracting, synthetic is adding. Crazy, okay, so what is 0 plus negative 35? Negative 35, okay? So you are adding with synthetic division. Okay, then I'm going to multiply by the box. What is negative 35 times negative 5? Negative I don't know either. Negative 175. Then I add. What's negative 6 plus 175? 169. Then I multiply by the box number. See where I'm going with this? It's a pattern. What's 169 times negative 5? 845. Okay, and then if I add that straight down, what's 9 minus 845? <laughs> All right. So herein lies my answer. Now, I can't just say that's the answer because that makes absolutely no sense. Ah, you have the right idea. So my first x, remember that my divisor was x cubed? I'm going to lose an x. x squared. So 7x squared minus 35x. Plus 169, and guess what the last number is? The remainder. The remainder. So we write the remainder as plus negative 836 divided by x plus 5, because x plus 5 is the divisor. Oh my. Oh my so what, what, what is 8, negative 836 divided by x plus 5 mean? Wow. It's just a fraction. It's kind of like uh, 9 tenths, right? It's just a fraction. Why can't it set that for everyone? Oh, that's good. Let's do another one. <laughs> okay, let's do another one. Let's do the one that says your turn on it. Let's do Let's do number six here. Can you guys see number six? How's that? So the longer one is the one that goes inside the box? The longer one? Yeah. No. This one. What do you mean by inside the box? The, 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 there's only one number in the box. My half box. Only one number. No, I mean like on long division. Oh, in long division. Yes, the big one goes inside the box. I see what you mean. Yes. 
Okay, so um, I have x minus 2. What is the number that goes inside the box for synthetic division? Positive 2. Very good. Everybody okay with that? Positive 2. Okay, what are the numbers that follow? Remember, I need a placeholder for every term. 2. 5. Negative 1. 7. See how it's negative? <clears throat> Everything that dropped is multiplied, right? Right. Add. All right, so we drop the first number, which is a 2. And then anything that gets dropped is multiplied. So it's 2 times 2. 4. Now remember that we're adding down. What's 5 plus 4? 9. 9 gets dropped. So it's 9 times 2. 18. Then I add negative 1 plus 18. 17. What's 17 times 2? 34. And 7 plus 34? 41. Okay, so how is my answer going to be? 2 plus 17 plus over. All right. How do you guys feel about that? Synthetic.